Okay, so let's go from this to something around this in the Rosette Nebula. So let's minimize this. I have Bill Blanchon's color masking and base setup, um, icons open. So let's start with this. Let's do an auto, trans auto screen transfer. Auto stretch. This is what we got. First thing I'm going to do is script, image analysis, image solver. Let's solve the coordinates for the image. Next, we will run process, all processes, spectrophotometric color, color calibration. This was taken with an L Extreme filter, so we fill that into the blue, green, red, and we will apply that. We have background neutralization checked, so it's automatically going to neutralize the background for us. Clear the stretch, restretch. And we have something that looks like this. So now we're going to do a dynamic crop to crop off the, crop, uh, the stacking edges. just so it's easier to work with. Next thing I'm going to do is run Blur Exterminator. Running it on completely default values. Next we'll run Noise Exterminator. On default values. Alright, let's do a basic stretch. So we'll go to process, all processes, open up the screen transfer function, and open up the histogram transformation. So Declick your link, so to delink the colors. Grab, grab your triangle up to the histogram transformation window, and drive the triangle from the histogram transformation window onto your image. Clear the stretch. So this is now stretched and an unlinked stretch. Next thing I want to do is I want to take the stars out. So process all processes, star exterminator, 
Make sure generate star image is checked and on screen stars is checked. And apply it. We'll take our star image, we'll rename it stars, let's go to process, all processes, curves, transformation, and just boost the saturation on the stars a little bit. We should probably turn on the real-time preview so we know what we're doing. So just a touch, doesn't do much. Just a touch. Apply that. Reset our tool. Close the current information. Close the real time preview. Minimize the stars. On our image here, first thing we're going to do is we're going to run another background neutralization just in case it does anything. It probably won't. And it didn't. And we're going to go and run a narrowband normalization on it. Bring up our preview, and we get this beautiful two color image using the palette of HOO because my Sulfur 2 filter hasn't come in yet. So I don't have SHO, so we just run the HOO on the palette. Lightness set to HA, give it a little bit more contrast. Keep mode to mode 1 for this image. Crank down the blend mode just to get a little bit more color in there. Okay, get a little bit away from the white. Go 3 boost. We'll take it up just a touch. Shadow reduction we're going to take down a little bit and the brightness we're going to move up a little bit. I'm just going to move it down a little bit. Apply. Reset. Close. Close. So now we're left with this. So we're going to use our color mask. The first mask we're going to use is a blue mask. Drag it on top of the picture and let it run. And we're going to stretch that mask using the mask blur. Either blur the mask quite a bit or else you get blotchy colors. So what's this? Four, five, in this case. What I'm going to do, I'm going to move it, I'm going to apply the mask, drag it over. I minimize this mask, show mask to hide the mask. Now let's go into process, all processes, curves, transformation. I want to make this blue a little bit more blue, a little less green. So let's go to the green tool, pull down the greens, and the highlight, push up the greens in the pull. I'm sorry, pull down the greens in the in the base. I'm just going to play with this until I get to the color and tonality that I want. Anytime you start to get color in the in the background, you pull it down on the low end and that pulls it, pulls the color back out. I'm going to use the B factor component. Change it to a little bit more blue. I'm not going to touch the global saturation. I'm going to do that all together. I like that. So let's apply that for now. Reset the tool. Close the tool. Close the real-time transformation. Close the real-time um, preview window. Now let's do a yellow mask. 
I might actually want to do a red mask. So I want to leave this yellow ring untouched. And let's see, did that? No, that that created just about every that grabbed just about everything. So let's go ahead and just blur this now. Four. Now we have to remove the mask from the original mask. Remove mask. Grab our yellow mask, apply it to the image, process all processes, curves transformation. We want that to be a little bit more red. Real time preview. Make that more red. I like it to be a little bit of a gold brown. Personally, I'll play with my colors till I get what I want. Play with the A component. Okay, let's apply that. Reset it. Close it. Close it. Remove the mask. Go in and go to back in with no mask applied to curve transformation. Go to the saturation feature. <clears throat> and let's saturate this till our heart's content. I like it right about there for the moment. Let's apply that. Let's reset it. Close. Close. Go to processes, all processes, general hypoallic stretch, and let's play with, let's go with to the linear mode, transformation type linear, drag our slider over to the right, pull up the preview window, darken that down, so it's not, so it's just clipping just a little ever so bit, 16 pixels. 16 whatever 16 or 0 16 in this case supply that reset the tool back to hyperbox stretch let's choose a, a lump in the histogram send send a um, symmetry point actually let's be more specific let's pull out some of this so let's click right there Send that to the symmetry point and stretch out a little bit. Just a little bit. Let's look at what we did. I actually don't like that, so let's reset the tool. Let's go back to where we started. I tend to like low lower contrast images. I don't like real high contrast. Let's turn that back on. That's what we're doing. So I like that with a lot of detail. We've gone from that to that. Pull out our brights a lot more. Let's go ahead and apply that. Take one of this highest, highest blues. And let's see what we can do with that. Pull up all the blues, symmetry point. Let's pull down the local intensity. And this is what we've done with this curve stretch. So let's go ahead and apply that. Reset. Close the tool, close the preview. I think I want my darks a little bit darker, so let's go back into the hyperbolic stretch. Go back to linear transformation type and drag our slider in just a little bit more. Let's apply that. Where we 
are. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to run the noise on it again, try to clean up the, the, the background a little bit. This didn't have enough exposure time. It could definitely be helped by more exposure. This was 15, seven and a half minute exposures on a 924 MC Pro with an L Extreme filter. So I could definitely, you know, definitely use more time. You can see it's, it's pretty noisy in the background, but I still think I got a pretty good pretty good result for for what I for what I put into it so far. Let's close that. Let's relabel this. Let's rename this to Starless. Out the there we go, Starless. Now let's put it all back together. Process all processes. Pixel math. Using the stars of Terminator recommended, and on the under the unscreen stars, it gives a recommended formula right here, and that's exactly what we're gonna do. Starless times stars. Make sure you put the. I think it's called a tilde in there for all the places. And we're going to add the stars back in. Close that. Let's go ahead and run Blur Exterminator on it one more time. Produce those stars a little bit more. I like everything in four by three crop ratios. Let's go to dynamic crop and let's get the crop in. So let's figure out where I want the up and down to be. Now that's height of 5032. So let's pull up our calculator. 5032 times three divided by two means our width should be 7548, 7548, let's center this up a little bit, just artistic crop, artistic, and that's what we end up with, something along those lines, let's see how we did. Pretty similar. That's a good thing. <laughs> and that is how I edit the Rosette Nebula.